To this day, our shoal defends our sea from everyone else. All the fish down here live in Rocky Cove. The name Rocky Cove comes from the mounds of underwater rocks. Some are as large as boulders, others as small as pebbles, and they all surround our community. Certain places have sand and underwater grass that sprout up through the rocks. We all grew up hearing about prophecies of things to come. One of these prophecies claim, One day there will be a man-god that wields the power to calm the sea, tame the storm, and walk on water. The prophecy goes on to say, The fish that sees him doing these things will carry a coin out of the sea. This prophecy has been passed on for many generations, but no one really believes this stuff. I mean, I've seen plenty of men fall into the water, and not one was ever able to walk on water. We have plenty of ships and boats that are now part of our domain that were crushed by the storms. Not one person was able to calm the storm. So, I think these are just ancient stories the old fish tell us to pass both time and history to the next generation. And not to mention the fact that humans are always trying to eat us. So why would we bring a coin outside the sea? And it goes without saying that a lot of this fishery comes from the seers, the ones who know the unknown. Even though I've never seen them, I am told they exist. Before I go on, let me formally introduce myself. My name is Ma'an. As I already told you, I am a musht of the Sarathodon Shoal. Each shoal is supposed to stick to their own kind, but my two best friends happen to be from the other families. From the Baini Longiseb Shoal comes my friend Alzawako, and from the Kinneret Shoal is my friend Tseel. You see, I don't really see things the way my tribe sees them. I think if Grandpa Galilee was supposed to be a father to many fish, wouldn't that mean we were all supposed to be a family? This question remains unanswered because we don't talk about this amongst the elders of our tribe. In fact, if anyone found out about my friends, I could experience death on a wood board. I've been told it's an excruciating way to die. The elders would come together with parts of leftover nets that have been lost by humans, then they tie you to a board from one of the ships that have crashed, and as you proceed to float to the surface, you become bird sushi. Despite all the dangers, I still refuse to give up my friends. How I met my friends could not have been an accident. You see, when I was born, my mom had a mouth full of kids. Literally. We all pretty much lived in her mouth, and we're supposed to stay close. We were not supposed to drift away from our cove, but I've always had a heart for adventure. I love to explore. One day, when our mom released us, she told us not to go far, but there was a sunken boat several fins from where I was, and I couldn't help but go explore it. My brothers and sisters warned me, but I told them I could take care of myself. I remember thinking to myself, if I can see the boat, I can see them from the boat. I ventured closer, closer, and closer to the boat, and further and further from my family. I couldn't hear them anymore. I admit, I was a little scared, realizing I was so far away. Hey! I heard a deep yell suddenly. I froze, startled. The voice continued speaking. What are you doing by my boat? I I'm sorry, I, I didn't know this was your boat, I replied. The voice spoke again. You're lucky I'm feeling graces today, or I'd take your life. Now go back where you came from, Moo. When I heard him say Moo, I knew it wasn't the big scary fish. Only the Kinneret family couldn't pronounce the sht in our name. It was forbidden for their clan. I spoke up. Show yourself, you midget fish. One thing, you never call a Kinneret fish anything that makes fun of their stature. I heard a loud scream heading toward me from the Kinneret fish. Ah! I braced myself for the impending impact. Right before he hit me, another fish came between us. He had a very soft but cool voice as he proclaimed, Yo, this is my boat. It was a little fish from the Biney family. It wasn't a grown-up or else we'd be dead. We were at a standstill and we heard nothing. Absolutely nothing. My scales started to feel weird as if I were being watched as we floated in silence. And then I saw it. No one had ever seen one and lived to tell. It had long, string-like barbells coming from its mouth. Swim! I yelled as I frantically swam toward the boat. The other two fish followed me, and we started weaving through the boat. We found some cracks and swam inside. It was dark and eerie. We could hear it above us. It was a loud noise. The sound echoed above us. 
We waited silently and held our water for what seemed like an eternity. We tried to peep through the cracks in the boat in hopes of seeing if it was still out there. When we felt like it was gone, we all let out a sigh of relief. We looked at each other for the first time and laughed. I was the first to speak up. My name is Ma'an. The small biny Kinneret fish was next to speak in his deep voice. Mine is Tzahel. I'm Azawako, said the biny Longisep fish in his smooth, calm tone. The uncertainty of our situation that day was overshadowed by our new friendship. From that day forward, we were best friends. The boat became our place where we could secretly meet up. There we vowed to never tell anyone about our secret club, because we knew if our families found out about it, it would be the end of our friendship, and possibly our lives.